Hey everybody, welcome to the story. Welcome to the story. Y'all know how it goes. We just gonna get started with a. Uh, we always get started with a video from the community, and uh, it's an unfussy church service. Y'all know the deal. We're gonna hop right into it. And then. Well, actually, I was asked to go several years ago, and I couldn't do it. So I was like, okay, I'm, I'm not giving up. I'm going to try again. And Miss Ann Merrill was like, we were sitting at, uh, in the fellowship hall for something. I couldn't even tell you for what. And she said, uh, would you be interested in going? I was like, yes. So immediately she handed me the form, and I immediately filled it out and, and went. And um, I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior, I guess when I was about 12. And um, I've always had a relationship, sometimes faint, sometimes better. But I did want to improve that. So I got the opportunity. And to be honest, there are no words to describe this weekend. I can say that it is very deep. I am so glad I went. And we won't even talk about the men in our church who cooked us meals, and I gained three pounds just over the weekend. But um, it was just to feel the love of Jesus and to know how he felt about us and how we can spread that has been incredible. You search deep, and you, you don't have a choice, but you stop and listen to what God is trying to tell you and what he wants for you. And his, his love for us is very deep and, again, never-ending. It was really awesome. That's the only word I can think of. But the altars, they spoke to me very strongly. But when you walk in and you see the, the altars and what they are trying to convey and every little detail of those altars has something to say that is very meaningful for me. People who have been praying for you and continue to pray for you, you just walk in and it's almost overwhelming with the amount of love and caring that comes from the Emmaus community. And, not, and really not just here in the sanctuary, but across the nation and across the world, people were praying for the Emmaus weekend and for all of us pilgrims. And that, that was so awe-inspiring. We're, we're told, love your neighbor, love your neighbor, and, and we do. But this weekend just really deepens it, and it's, it's beyond love. If it's almost adoration, because it's just, I want that. I want that all the time. Almost makes you kind of greedy, <laughs> because you want, you want to be a part of that community. You want to feel that love. It is a weekend. You will never forget, as long as you live, to be a part of the Emmaus community, to feel the love of Jesus and your fellow Christians is indescribable. I could sit and give you play-by-play -play of the weekend, but that's not gonna do it. It needs to come from you. It is the time it's worth the time to be away from your family, to be away from your job, because in this, you have to put yourself first. You have to make yourself better so that you can help those around you. So good. Just... Well, that's good. We're just going to respond with some worship. That's what we got. We got goodness of God. Sweet. Oh, we're doing come back out there.
goodness first. We got goodness. goodness of God goodness of God Never see. 
Call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount I'm fixed upon it, mount of thy redeeming love. Here I raise my heaven. So today we um, we talked about sowing and reaping, uh, sowing seeds and reaping your harvest, and that goes so much further than just financial. Um, you know, for me personally, uh, one one of the big things that I was taught at an early age was to sow seeds of hope into your community if you want your community to thrive and flourish, whether that be the church or the actual community itself. Um, and then hearing Miss Jamie talk about Emmaus, Emmaus was, was a seed that was planted in my heart um, and an exchange has helped me plant seeds and for the future for others. And I really, um, I really enjoy, I didn't know anything about this video, but that really, really put a lot of it in perspective, even after I've gone and done all this um, stuff for the sermon. But Emmaus, Emmaus really taught me to, as what just I said, as, as, planting seeds into other people's lives for not only your community, but theirs, and showing the love of Christ. Um, so when I get into this, I want to ask, when have you sowed a seed in your life? And 
have you been able to reap the benefits from that? I can, uh, I can share places where I've sown bad seeds. And it that, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Because uh, one thing that's big on my heart, obviously, is scripture. I mean, to be a Christian, you have to. To survive, you must eat. And uh, scripture is like that food. And um, too often I'll find myself sowing just the most worthless time spent in like video games or, uh, you know, reading something that's just not worth reading. You know, whatever the case may be, I find myself sowing just distraction and reaping distraction. And it, 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 I can feel it when, it when I do that, it weakens my man, my spiritual man. And it becomes a lot easier to sin. It becomes a lot easier to catch an attitude. It becomes a lot easier to forget the goodness of the gospel that, that should keep me locked in. And I just lose it. And right. it's because I sow. I sow distraction. I reap that distraction. Yeah, so reaping benefits, it's not just benefits. It's if you reap um, anger, evil, you know, you reap those consequences. Then also on the other side of the coin, it's the Lord in my life has been um, really intentional with uh, every need that she, he knows every need that I have before I even ask. And to, with that knowledge, come to him in faith. And I've been in this really sweet season with the Lord where uh, I have just been blessed with abundance some areas and he's given me a mindset that that's not mine it's his you know every good and every perfect gift comes from above right and so when when he provides surplus and i find it when i'm generous with that surplus when i when i see it is not my money when i see it is not my resources and i freely give that with a cheerful heart i've just been getting bombarded with bombarded with jobs. I, I, it's honestly been kind of exhausting. I had like three, dude, it was crazy. I was, I was doing gardening with my sister and uh, she was really excited about it. She only had like $30 to put into it. We needed like 80 and I was like, I had like probably $60 in my account and I spent 50 of it to help her garden. And I, I didn't know when I was gonna get paid again. And I was like, Lord, you got it. You know, I, I believe that this is, this is good and this is for you and, and I'm gonna treat it that way. That week, not even three days later, we got three months of work in two weeks. Three months of work. And was just overwhelmed with thousands of dollars worth of jobs and was yeah, able was able to have fun going to do them too. Because uh, one of them was in Florida. I got to I got to get paid to go to the beach. It's the greatest thing ever. The greatest thing ever. So yeah, that I see that the reaping of generosity and sowing just abundance is, is a very prevalent theme in my life. To touch on each of the three things you guys have talked about, sowing bad things, sowing good things, and also being part of Emmaus, after, after finishing Emmaus, I, like, one kind of revelation that I had was I, was I was putting a lot of energy and a lot of time into friendships and relationships in my life that um, I don't think were benefiting me. Um, uh, more so the fact that I was, it was requiring a lot of myself and I don't think anything was being given back and it was, it was in like a, a really it was, it was a revelation moment with God that I was like I'm in this moment right now where I know that there are people that would show up for me and I'm spending a lot of time and a lot of effort on these relationships and I know that they won't show up for me and it's like, it was like that hard realization of like I just gotta like really reevaluate like the relationships and the friendships and the time and all that stuff that I'm putting into this, not only for just for myself, but also for them as well. And it was just a lot of stuff. And so like after leaving that, I think I've now focused on more on that other aspect of like, there were some friendships and relationships in my life that I was kind of putting on the back burner that I, I know that they were always there for me and they always cared for me. But now I'm being intentional about like, I appreciate you. <laughs> You're great and a big part of my life, and I think I was taking that for granted and spending that time on people that 
I don't think would really ever care if something actually was to go wrong. And so that's kind of been a big thing in my life over, wh when did we go to Emmaus? Was it February, March? I went after you. No, we went at the same time. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. I was so say, sorry. Yes, that's okay. No, we were at the same time. I apologize. Yeah, no, you're good. But yeah, so I think, oh, so it's been the course of this year so far that I've tried, yeah. to, tried to put more of that sewing into that, into those relationships, into those people that I, I think I've taken for granted. I went after you. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes, because we came to y'all's camp like, yes, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. In, in the parable, Jesus talks about the sowing and the planting of seeds, and and that's so incredibly important, but, I mean, he mentions um, that's only part of it. Mm -hmm. We can sow all the seeds in the world. We can sit here and wait to have those seeds planted in us all we want. But if the soil's not right, that's right. if our heart isn't open and receptive, we're going to, it's not going to do any good. And the same with, you know, we can go out there and we can preach and teach and do all that stuff, but... If it's not right, it's not going to happen. That 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 ground has to be prepared. That's it. You know, we have to we have to be able to find those that are receptive, those that really want to hear. You know, uh, and and there it will flourish. Mm -hmm. I agree one hundred percent. I've been in a season of matching energy. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> and so <laughs> I have needed to uh, check myself. Um, so I started doing like a daily devotional and I've really just been consistent with it. I've never done that before. I've really been consistent with it. And so as it comes up in topics of conversation with people that are being super negative, I don't, um, match their energy anymore. I'm very much like, Oh, that's how you feel about it. Sorry about it. And like redirect it if it can be redirected, but if it can't, I am actively removing myself from situations that put like unnecessary strain and pressure. And I'm, and like to, like over the last few weeks, we've been like actively inviting our friends who don't attend church to church with us. They have all attended. And I am just like, oh, go me, look at this. And that is much more um, instant. And they, um, I don't expect to see them every week, but just to get them to tap into that the church that they left and to try it out again is just so huge for them and my friendship with them not that like i'm pressuring them to go to church but to where we have something more like holy to speak about instead of negativity good Get some water um, yes, I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. <laughs> and that food is so good. It was, I, I, and y'all don't talk, I, don't, I feel like people who have attended a maze don't say this enough. It was very strange in the beginning. <laughs> Dude. Yes. It was very strange in the beginning, but it all came together towards. It, I, it was very odd. I yeah. think, it, I think it, for me, I think it broke down some walls. And maybe for, for me at least, I was like, this is a bit. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it broke down some of that, the barriers I had. I was like, okay, I need to rethink about 
It's honestly kind of skillful the way they I don't did know. it. We, I get it. They did it on purpose. You're not, supposed, you're purpose. not supposed to talk about a lot of the stuff that happens in Emmaus in detail because it's all an experience. A lot of it's kind of, a lot of the like big things that happen are kind of secretive, but it's a, a great thing. So, you can talk about Right. I'll share. No, go ahead. Right. Of course. Of course. Yeah. That's what I was going to say to finish my point. I got caught up on the weird stuff. But that's what I love about Emmaus, Emmaus the most is they're so intentional. They're extremely intentional with how they, they inject that love. And I use inject purposefully. That's a good adjective. Yeah. I, I love that speaking, like we're, since we're like in the sermon series of like generosity and, and giving and that sort of stuff, like I, I find it, I don't want to say coincidental, but like that Emmaus just happened and we're talking about all this stuff because that's one thing that I think I realized personally was this. I don't think I've felt love like that from a community of two churches that I used to be a part of. People here at Blackwater, people at Broadmoor, like all coming together in one space to just show love and support and just that amount of generosity, that overabundance, that, I mean, that just that love that just kept giving, that I was like, man, I, I now feel full that I can give that to other people. Yeah. Speaking of full, um, one, there, there's a lot of experiences in Mayus that I will always remember. But one in particular, um, I was absolutely sick of eating food. And, and, uh, and coming from a big person, that's weird to hear. And um, all, all I wanted was sherbet. And I was told that they were out of sherbet, and I was just broken. <laughs> but then the it's next thing I know, there's a big old bowl of sherbet that's coming towards me. I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> and then every single night after that, just a big old bowl of sherbet. And I'm like, this is sure. weird, but awesome. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah. I went to, as a teenager, and this is, I'm going to elaborate on what you're saying. As a teenager, I went to Happening, and Happening is the, um, is the teenage version of Emmaus. And, um, and then I went, as a, as a servant, 
or to happening many, 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 many times. And as an adult, I was told, well, you can't just go, you know, to Emmaus as a, as a servant. You have to go through Emmaus to go to be a servant. And I was like, but, but I went through happening, and it's the same thing. And so I get it. And they're like, no, you still have to go through Emmaus. So I did. And it was great, and it was, um, it was, it was cathartic, and I realized that my, my cup was empty and needed to be full and, and all of that stuff. But it also drove me absolutely insane that, like, that I wasn't, I wasn't able to be on the servant side because I'm, 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 that, I'm that person. I like to be on the servant side. So, like, to, to, to let other people serve me was, was, was difficult, and it was, it was also humbling, and it was, um, it was needed because that's where I have trouble. And so to, to, to do that was, was wild. And that's something that, um, that I think is also um, important when you, when you are sowing seeds is that there are people who need that, who need to be able to be the one to, to serve you. So it's just, it's just interesting. And then I, you know, I went back and served for Emmaus and everything, but my original going, going through Emmaus was a, was a very difficult experience. Still good there. It was still amazing. So the, the seeds of generosity that were sown when I was there, just, it opened my mind and my heart that I needed to do better. I really needed to do much better because um, I'd, never felt, I'd never felt that before. Um, so to what you were going to say, I don't know if it's the same thing, but you can add it right after this. Um, to tie it back into what the sermon is about today is um, the seeds that were sown and planted got me back on track to sow seeds for other people for their future harvest. So I shared a story in this service, and probably it's been a while now, but asking God for opportunities to, um, to help people. Like, I feel like I get a lot, I get really caught up in my routines and, and just day-to-day -day life and things like that. And so I remember on the heels of Emmaus and a, a different sermon series that we were a part of, just really wanting to, I know that there are opportunities that I have passed up. I just, I, I, I know that because of just how kind of like focused I am and there are people that I've walked by um, and I, I think I felt called to help them and I haven't and, you know, that whole situation and like, and just being more intentional about like, being in the moment for those kind of situations. And, I, and I, I have had some of those opportunities come up and I've been able to be active in like helping someone out. And I'm like, whereas I know for a fact I would have just passed that opportunity by. And so, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Preach. <laughs> I did not, and I just went in February with you guys, yeah. but I put it off for years and years and years, just, you know, wasn't sure I wanted to do that. Um, number one, I wish I would have gone years ago. Number two, I have never seen any type of event that touched every single person 
not just the seed, right? But even the hearts of those that are around you. I mean, it's just it's I, I can't describe it. You just have to do it to understand. Um, I, I would wish anyone to to take that opportunity and and you know there's some things that are a little make you a little uneasy as far when you're thinking in advance and once you get there it's okay but but looking forward you're like oh i don't know you know how can i be i'm better not talk about that but but anyway just some of the things um well i will to, to be able to put a cell phone and laptop away for three days it's you know, rough. My, they, they like, may even take my watch off i can do that and your watch you know? it, it's rough. Um, it, it, it's that was stiff, but oh my gosh, the reward, the outcome, the ending is just incredible. Yeah, I at the at the end, I felt um, I felt like a new person, <laughs> and that's it's really weird to say and hear. Like if you haven't done it, um, but I I felt renewed. I I felt like I had a purpose. And um, I will never forget the experience that I had with Kenan where I felt like I, I wanted to talk to him about what I had just experienced because he, he was the spiritual director over the walk that we had. So he was kind of like the, the, um, the, pa the pastor over it. And he was sitting in the sanctuary. And I remember wanting to just like, wanting to share what I was experiencing and feeling and literally sitting down next to him and just going, wow. And he was like, yeah, right? And that's all I could say was just, wow. Right. 1151. Excuse me, silly. So, uh, uh, <laughs> me? No. She, like she was pregnant at the time of the last one. Um, uh, you know, one thing, one thing when, when all this was going on, there, there was a lot of people that kept coming to check on me because I was not talking to anyone. <laughs> you know, I, I was dealing with my inner stuff myself and um, that's okay. I want everybody to understand that that's okay. And uh, finally, they just kind of accepted, like, that's what I was doing. And um, when I was able to talk about it after, it, it really, everyone just kind of was like, wow, that's awesome. That's awesome that you were able to do that. You know, like you were, I just needed, I needed my time. I needed my time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it held at the same places? Okay. So to
So let, let's, let's close with this. God doesn't do things without purpose. And... Um, Let's, let's pray. Let's pray real quick. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for our time together today. Help you. Uh, thank you for helping us plant seeds into people's lives and uh, for future lives. Um, thank you for being a beacon of light uh, towards future for others. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You said it was Jesus does, right, Regan? Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> Who tells the sun to rise every morning covers the sky with the shades of his glory Wakes us with mercy and love Jesus does Who holds the earth the wind eyes for injustice feels every sorrow carries the pain of his children Jesus does so we sing praise to the Father who gave us the Son and praise to the Spirit who's living in us Washes us clean with his blood, Jesus does, I believe that he does. He sings a song of sweet forgiveness, who stole the keys to hell and the grave, who has the power to save, Jesus does.